Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. Hey, folks, welcome back to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast. Hey, I am so glad you decided to tune in today. Today, we're going to talk about why low carb diets are such an effective way to manage type 2 diabetes and even reversing it. So in this week's episode, here's what you can expect to discover. We're going to talk all about what type 2 diabetes is, you know, and keep it really basic because if you've recently been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, you may be confused. You may not know exactly what's going on. So we're going to keep it basic to give you a level set understanding of what type 2 diabetes is. Next, we're going to also talk about the power of low carb diets. We'll discuss why low carb diets are a secret weapon that you can use against type 2 diabetes without using complicated and complex medical terms, you know, and get real technical. We're going to stay away from that. You'll learn how low carbs can help you maintain steady blood sugar, help you to shed extra pounds and improve your overall health. And number three, we're going to talk about the top four foods I recommend that you should cut back on. You see, it's not just about elimination and starting an an elimination diet, but it's more so looking at how these things are affecting our bodies and making a conscious effort and decision to either reduce or cut back on certain foods that are problem foods for us. And the last thing we're going to do is wrap up and talk about the next steps and give you some reminders about the importance of connecting with your healthcare provider. So tune in and let's get the lowdown on managing type 2 diabetes and reversing it through a lifestyle of low carb eating. And as always, I appreciate those of you who subscribe, who leave reviews and share with your friends who are on the same journey as you are. My friend, you have the power to take control of your health. So stick around to hear the rest of this week's episode. Let's go. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. My goal is to help diabetics and non-diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. You know, when I was 268 pounds, folks, and in the hospital, I had to make a decision. It was really a big decision to save my life. It was very critical that I did whatever it took to turn things around. It wasn't easy. If you've been tuning in for any length of time, uh, you've heard me tell my story over and over again because I want it to be a reminder to folks that we can do hard things during hard times. And you may be experiencing a tough time right now, recently being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, or maybe it's been a couple years you've been dealing with it, you've been on meds for a while, and you're like, man, it's time for me to turn things around. It's more than just exercising. It's more than just going out and walking and, and even running. And I love running big time. There's more to it than just exercise. It's what we do Uh, when it comes to putting things in our bodies that make a big difference. I'm so glad that you tuned in to learn all about type 2 diabetes and how to manage it. But let me say this right off the rip. Nutrition is very, very important. Folks, when I came out of the hospital, I had to make a decision, a sound decision when it came to my eating lifestyle. Either I was going to keep eating the way that I was eating and end up back in the hospital or or even worse, or I was going to have to do whatever it takes to uh, turn things around. Well, I'm glad that um, I focused a lot on learning more about nutrition and uh, how to uh, incorporate healthy meals in my diet, because you know what? It turned things around. Some people ask me, 
okay, Oscar, I see that you've lost over 80 pounds. How did you do it? Uh, how did you go from being on high cholesterol medication and diabetes medication and taking insulin injection and so forth? Well, it took educating myself primarily about nutrition. I can't emphasize it enough. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. The things that we're putting in our bodies make a big difference. It's more than just stop eating cookies. And I love cookies, I'll be honest. Uh, but it's more than just that. It's more than just, you know, not having sweets. There's so much more to nutrition than just eliminating uh, certain things. But I figured that, you know what, let me do this episode where I talk specifically about low carb diets and low carb eating or what what we would call a low carb eating pattern, because this becomes a big struggle for a lot of people. You have some people who are dealing with diabetes, not because they are eating a lot of sugary foods and drinking a lot of sugary drinks, but they are really loading up on carbs and they're eating carbs for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And they don't realize the impact. So I wanted to uh, get this episode before you so that you can understand the impact of going low carb. I did it and I'm so glad I did. So um, for before I go on real quick, I want to thank all of you all who are tuning in, whether you found me through TikTok, uh, social media like Instagram or Facebook or maybe word of mouth. Maybe you stumbled on to this podcast by just Googling. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in. I have people tuning in from literally all around the world um, on a regular basis. So I just want to thank you guys from whether you're in um, Europe, you're in Africa, you're in Asia or here in the U.S. Thank you so much. So, again, remember to subscribe to this podcast. Tell somebody about it. Tell somebody about this guy named Oscar Camejo, who used to be 268 pounds, a diabetic on medication, who turned things around by doing simple, practical things to improve his health, not only improve my health, but to reverse type 2 diabetes. Listen, if I can do it, folks, you can too. So let's get into this week's episode. Let's start with the very beginning and the very basics. Uh, Understanding type 2 diabetes is like learning the ABCs of your own health. It's crucial to know what's inside your body and what's happening inside your body. It was something that really revolutionized the way how I approached my uh, lifestyle change to not only manage type 2 diabetes, but to reverse it. You know, type 2 diabetes uh, is this in a nutshell. Imagine your body as a well-oiled machine, right? And sugar or glucose is the primary fuel. When you eat something, your body's job is to get that sugar or those uh, carbs, if you will, from your bloodstream and into your cells where that um, energy source is used Um, to help fuel your body. You understand what I'm saying? So again, your body is a well-oiled machine. Sugar or glucose is a primary fuel. Now, don't get it twisted. Don't think um, I'm saying, hey, yeah, eat a bunch of sugar so you can have a lot of fuel. No, that's not what I'm saying. But think about glucose. Glucose is an energy source, right? Is what your body uses for fuel. So uh, it's okay to have glucose because your brain needs it to function, your muscles need it, uh, and so forth. So when it comes to type 2 diabetes, something gets thrown off. Your body doesn't handle sugar as it should, and here's why. There's a thing called insulin resistance. Your cells become less responsive to insulin. Insulin is a hormone that acts like a key to open the doors um, to your cells. Now, your body naturally produces insulin uh, through your pancreas. Your pancreas is what produces insulin. Now, insulin's job is to let sugar inside your cells. But with insulin resistance, just to even think about the, the, the term insulin resistance, that's like the key that is supposed to open the door. It doesn't fit properly. 
sugar stays in your blood. But here's the issue. Um, when insulin doesn't um, open or fit the lock properly, uh, sugar starts to build up or stay within your bloodstream. And since uh, the sugar can't enter your cells effectively, it lingers and stays longer than it needs to be in your bloodstream, as I mentioned. This leads to high blood sugar levels, which is a problem because too much or excess sugar can damage your organs and blood vessels over time. That's where you have people who are losing limbs or they have issues with their eyesight. Some people go blind. Um, even some people have issues with their cognition or memory. Um, they're having memory fog. And it's even um, been reported that Alzheimer's is considered type 3 diabetes. So in a nutshell, type 2 diabetes is all about sugar regulation and making sure your blood glucose levels don't go off the rail. It's just like trying to unlock a door with a bent key. But here's the good news. You have the power to straighten that key and regain control over your blood sugar levels or your glucose levels. Now, lifestyle matters big time, folks. Lifestyle factors like diet, exercise, stress management, and even sleep can play a major role in either exacerbating or managing type 2 diabetes. That's why we're here, folks. It's to explore the practical lifestyle changes that you and I can make that will cause a world of difference. Okay, so now that we've got a handle on what type 2 diabetes is, let's dive into how you can take the reins and improve your health through a low carb diet. So why should you even consider a low carb diet? Well, good question. Well, it's like a secret weapon against type two diabetes. Here's why it's effective. Steady blood sugar, that's important. We wanna be able to control our blood sugar. Going low carb uh, helps keep your blood sugar in check. You can say goodbye to those wild sugar roller coaster rides. You can work on losing those extra pounds. Low carb diets often help you shed some pounds. Listen, I was able to lose over 80 pounds doing exactly what I'm telling you um, to do and what I'm suggesting you should do. Healthy cholesterol. Uh, that's another area. I was on high cholesterol medications, as I mentioned earlier. You see, it's not just about sugar, folks. It's also about those cholesterol numbers too. Going low carb can help improve the good stuff and lower the bad cholesterol. So, and your primary care physician can help you to understand more about that. Even an endocrinologist, if you uh, uh, are able to get in front of one to learn more about what's happening with your body. So uh, here's another thing, less carbs, will help you to even reduce your meds. Um, because listen, now I'm, um, I'm not a physician. I am not telling you to automatically just start reducing your meds. I am not saying that. I'm telling you in my situation, I was able to taper off meds until my doctor finally cleared me of having to even take medications. I'm no longer on diabetes medication. I'm no longer on high blood uh, cholesterol medication, as I mentioned before. But it took some time. You're talking about hard work. Um, I think I was off all meds within a year or so. Now, uh, keep in mind that didn't just happen overnight. It did take some time to uh, get to that point. But it's the more and more I started losing weight, the more and more I started incorporating healthy things in my diet, the more I went low carb, uh, the better. It really helped to change my life, I'm telling you. And my doctor was even surprised because at one point he said that I was going to be on meds long term. And it was just something inside me that said, I, you know what? I don't want to be on meds for the rest of my life. I don't want to be on meds long term. So what is it that I need to do to improve my health? So again, the more and more I incorporated a low carb diet, the more I started incorporating healthier foods. And yes, I did reduce sugar. 
significantly in the form of like liquid calories. You know, I stopped drinking um, sodas, fruit juices, sweet teas, lemonades, um, sports drinks, um, and even some of these high sugary smoothies from this one particular place. And I just started incorporating more vegetables, more um, healthy proteins. Um, you know, I didn't stop eating chicken. I just stopped eating the, uh, chicken the way how I used to have it prepared, you know, breaded chicken. Um, I went from breaded and fried chicken to more broiled and baked chicken um, steak. You know, I still eat steak to this day, you know, and and I love it. And so um, but in terms of low carb, um, here are some things, um, four things I would say that I recommend that you cut back on or in some situations eliminate. Now, I am not saying that elimination diets are the way to go, but there are certain things that I think that, you know, you should eliminate. You should get rid of because you really don't need them. Now, when I go through these four things, some people cringe sometimes because they love these things. You know, I was there. So I decided that for me, if I were going if I was going to lose weight and get my blood sugar under control, I had to uh, manage the glucose in my body and learn about the things that were causing my blood sugar to spike. What was causing me to have a difficult time just uh, managing type two diabetes? You know, um, I realized that, okay, I'm taking these insulin injections because of the things that I was putting in my body. So I'm like, okay, I need to uh, be wise about this. The less of certain things that I would eat, the less amount of insulin that I would um, be required to take. Because, you know, for me, I think I was up to like 36 units of insulin injection based on what I was um, eating and, and so forth. So I decided to wise up and just start eliminating some things. Now, folks, um, one thing that was hard for me to give up was pizza. And I'm telling you, uh, I used to have pizza on Thursdays, right? It was pizza Thursdays in our household at the time. And I would eat pizza like three, four, five slices of pizza, plus have some fruit juice or soda. It was like Fanta orange or something. And just, you know, three and four glasses of soda you know, I wouldn't even think about drinking water, but it was just a lot of pizza, a lot of pizza. And on another day of the week, it was like um, some type of pasta, like spaghetti uh, or lasagna. And you're talking about high sodium, high carbs, plus the pasta sauce. Um, sauce is just was just full of so much sugar. And so at the time, this, this stuff tasted good, but I wasn't thinking about my health at the time. I was just thinking about, you know, eating. So, uh, again, he, here are the four things that I recommend that you cut back on. You know, I can talk about how I used to eat all day and maybe some of you guys can relate. Um, oh, by the way, I haven't had pizza in probably two and a half to three years now. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about somebody who loved pizza. So anyway, um, I don't want to keep going down a rabbit trail, but, you know, I try to be practical, let you guys know that this stuff is real. I've been there, done that. OK. All right. So let's get into the tasty part. What to cut back on or reduce or maybe even eliminate. Here are the four things. Rice, bread, pasta, potatoes. Yeah. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> Yes, rice, bread, pasta, potatoes. Now you may say, okay, Oscar, now you're going way too far. You know, I don't believe in extreme diets. I'm not telling you anything that's extreme, folks. I'm just telling you um, when it comes to high carbs, you may want to consider these four things. And I'm not the only one who has who has had success um, where this is concerned, there are different people who um, can attest to this as well. Matter of fact, you can uh, Google low carb diets for diabetics and there'll be quite a bit of information that will help you 
um, to learn more about the positive effect that going low carb can have on, on your life. Now, let me say this about rice. You know, uh, my family's Caribbean. You know, my dad's Cuban and God rest his soul. And uh, my mom is Jamaican. So you're talking about Latin and uh, Jamaican. So rice is a staple of almost every meal. (laughs) So just like pizza for me, uh, rice was a big thing to reduce. You're talking about a lot of white rice. um, Almost every meal, um, there is some type of rice, whether it's yellow rice, white rice. And so you can imagine how hard it was to just cut back on eating rice. You see, white rice can be a blood sugar skyrocket. Uh, Swap out cauliflower rice or get some whole grains like quinoa. Some people like doing that. Some people like brown rice. So the the main thing is the type of rice. So I'm not saying completely eliminate all types of rice. I'm just wanting you to consider white rice. You know, there are certain things on this list. You know, the four things I'm talking about, like your, your white foods. Those are things, those are carbs that really tend to spike your blood sugar. So Here's the balance. Again, I'm talking about white rice. Now, some people love white rice and they don't have a problem with it. Their body doesn't um, uh, respond negatively to eating uh, white rice when it comes to their blood sugar. This, again, is nuanced, but it's something that you may want to consider Uh, and just try it for yourself. See the difference when you're checking your blood sugar after eating some rice. what does your what do your numbers look like? So kind of keep that in mind. Next category is bread. Uh, regular bread is a big carb bomb. Trust me, folks. And bread is probably one of the most um, consumed of the of this list. You know, people eat bread like with sandwiches for lunch. They may eat bread in the morning. They may also eat some type of bread for uh, with their dinner. So I want you to look for whole grain or low low carb kinds of bread. I like Ezekiel bread. That tends to be um, easier for me um, to still incorporate some type of bread, but that's healthier. You know, Ezekiel bread, yes, is a little bit more on the costly side, but um, you're talking about no yeast uh, and so forth, and you're getting a whole grains. They have different kinds of um, Ezekiel bread that I like. Um, some people like to, let's say, for example, um, for breakfast, if you want to have some toast, try getting some Ezekiel bread. And there's some other brands out there that I've tried. I just happen to like um, Ezekiel bread. So Uh, For breakfast, let's say if you want toast, like an avocado toast, uh, maybe you want to do some scrambled eggs, a boiled egg. um, That would be a great uh, way to start your morning. And, you know, by cutting back on the type of bread you're eating or replacing the white breads, um, especially that cheap bread, like the Wonder Breads. And oh, my gosh, there's so many kinds out there. And here's the thing, too. When you're going out to purchase um, bread, ignore what's on the front packaging where it says, it may say a healthy source of, I don't know, calcium or whatever. Always ignore the front of the packaging. Don't buy products based on the packaging, even if it's a popular brand. Flip over and look at the nutrition labels. Look at the amount of carbs and calories that that particular uh, item will yield per serving. I have an entire podcast episode, if you scroll down, where it talks about uh, nutrition labels, which I need to update. I need to uh, do another podcast uh, on just nutrition labels for those who haven't been with me for a while. But in the meantime, go and look at nutrition labels on that podcast episode where I break down how to read um, nutrition labels. So when you're going out and getting some bread, I'm not saying completely eliminate all kinds of bread. It's just the white breads because those are sugar bombs. Trust me, they're like exploding car uh, carbs that would just definitely raise your blood sugar. 
Next thing is pasta. You know, I mentioned it earlier, like your pizza, your pizza, your um, spaghetti, your lasagnas, uh, even chicken parmesan. Um, you know, it, it, it's in, in a bed of pasta. I used to love getting chicken parmesan when I would go to an Italian restaurant. So regular pasta it, it definitely is loaded with a bunch of carbs. So I want you to consider whole grain pastas or even some veggie noodles. Um, consider that there's some alternatives. Um, there's some people who've made, um, what is it? Uh, spiral zucchini and squash and use that as noodles um, or pasta instead. Uh, so give that a try. There's a bunch of rep- uh, recipes out there. All right. Fourth, here's the last category of the top four foods I think you should cut back on or find healthier options. And that's potatoes. Potatoes. Yes, they're delicious. Man, roasted potatoes with garlic and herbs on it, um, some parsley and basil. Uh, man, I, I, I know it. Potatoes, they just taste so good. But guess what, folks? They can send your blood sugar through the roof. Uh, as an alternative, I like sweet potatoes. And I know sweet potatoes are still considered a carb, but regular white potatoes uh, will spike your uh, blood sugar uh, for a lot of people more than sweet potatoes. Um, besides, sweet potatoes have more uh, nutrients. Um, they're more nutrient dense than regular white potatoes. Um, some people like sweet potatoes. Some people are like, hey, I don't want to deal with potatoes, period. So they'll mash up some cauliflower instead, right? And use uh, cauliflower as that uh, to give that some type of texture that's similar to potato. So now here's the other thing about potatoes. I'm talking about all forms of potatoes as well. I'm talking about French fries. There's a, a time where I went a very, very long time without eating uh, French fries you know, no uh, fried foods in the form of potatoes or French fries. I mean, it, it was something that worked wonders for me. Besides, you know, um, and I could do an entire episode on fried foods versus grilled foods and baked foods and so forth. So um, the process in which foods are made also make a big difference. So um, I want to keep it very simple. So keep in mind, potatoes, choose an alternate uh, option or an alternative to regular white potatoes, such as sweet potatoes or mashed up cauliflower. Okay. I told y'all I was going to keep it really simple and very, very practical. So hopefully you got something out of um, this episode. So again, um, work on eliminating or reducing rice, bread, pasta, potatoes, especially the way that they've been prepared um, up until this point for you or what you're used to eating, find healthier alternatives and you'll start seeing pounds being shared. You start seeing your blood sugar numbers, um, increasing for, or uh, getting better, I should say, improving for the better. Now, yes, I was talking about reducing or eliminating, but it's important to incorporate healthy options. As I mentioned earlier, eat more fruits and vegetables. Definitely, folks, a lot of green vegetables incorporate colors like red, yellow. Um, those are really going to benefit you uh, in the long run. Trust me. And I that's the lifestyle that I choose to eat now. I stick to what's called like a Mediterranean style um, eating pattern. I actually have an entire episode um, that's dedicated to that to give you an understanding of why um, Mediterranean style eating is very important and very beneficial. Uh, it's not a diet. It's not something that you go on for like 30 days and, you know, you're trying to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. No, it's a lifestyle pattern and you're primarily eating lots of vegetables, lots of uh, healthy fats, healthy proteins and so forth, incorporating olive oil instead of your vegetable oils and your seed oils when you're cooking food and, and so forth. So um, I think also on my website, I have a blog post where I deal specifically with 
the Mediterranean style eating. So keep that in mind, folks. Uh, I can only share with you what's been nuanced for me, what has helped me. But just keep in mind that high carbs will drive weight gain, which will contribute to type 2 diabetes in, in many cases. And for a lot of people, it will keep your blood sugars high. It will keep your glucose levels high. And the goal is to reduce the amount of glucose and sugar that remains in our bloodstream and give our body a chance to reset, give your pancreas a time to reset and do what it's supposed to do. Okay, folks. So in a nutshell, remember, uh, a low carb diet can be your new best friend to fight against type two diabetes and win. Uh, but remember, it's important. Talk with your doctor before making any big time changes to your eating uh, and your diet. Um, we'll be back, of course, on a weekly basis with more practical tips, real life stories on how to beat type 2 diabetes um, and how to help others do the same. Folks, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast. You know, my goal is to help folks. You know, when I was going through my diabetes scare, I went through it alone. I didn't have the support that I wish I had, but nevertheless, I am glad that I kept going. I kept moving. I kept, you know, focusing on the goal, which was to survive, which was not only to survive, but to bounce back and bounce back strong and to be healthy. And I'm so glad I did. And so as always, folks, like I end every episode, I want you to do these things. Stay focused. Keep moving. Never go back. Leap forward. Bounce back because you can, my friend. And above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.